Now you've probably heard of the Big Bang Theory, but the first thing that comes to mind is most likely a guy in a Green Lantern t-shirt yelling, Bazinga! But the actual Big Bang Theory is a beautifully complex explanation of how our universe came into existence about 13.8 billion years ago. So get ready because in this episode I'm going to answer the question, how do we know there was a Big Bang? Hi, I'm Matt Parker, and in this episode we're going to be looking at the question, how do we know there's a Big Bang? But first, let's start by describing what the Big Bang Theory states. According to cosmologists, the universe has expanded to its current state from an infinitely dense and incredibly hot point called a singularity. However, the universe didn't explode with a loud boom in the way the name of the theory implies. The start of the cosmos was more likely just an incredibly fast expansion. Within the first second after the Big Bang, temperatures reached about 10 billion degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, the universe consisted of a sea of fundamental particles like protons, neutrons, and electrons, just to name a few. Electrons would have been free at this time and would have scattered light in all directions, causing the universe to be opaque. It wasn't until about 380,000 years after the Big Bang that these free electrons were captured by nuclei, forming the first neutral atoms, which allowed the universe to become transparent. This initial light is occasionally referred to as the afterglow of the Big Bang, but is more commonly referred to as the cosmic microwave background, which can actually still be observed today. Now keep that in mind, because I'm going to come back to it in just a bit. Throughout several billion years, the universe began to form areas of higher density where gravitational forces began to clump matter into nebulae, stars, and galaxies as the universe as we know it began to take shape. Now you may be thinking, how is there any way possible we can know this happened? But remember, the cool thing about science is that we can use indirect evidence to piece puzzles together. Like any puzzle, there have been multiple pieces put together to form the Big Bang Theory. In other words, there are multiple strands of evidence that support this origin for our universe. And we are going to learn about three of the major strands of evidence. To begin with, we can actually see that galaxies are moving farther away. Back in 1912, astronomer Vesto Slipher, who probably has the coolest name ever, became the first person to use the redshifts of galaxies to calculate the speed and direction those galaxies were moving, and he determined that most of them were moving away from us. At the time, however, Slipher thought these galaxies were just clusters of stars within our own galaxy. You see, back in the early 1900s, it was still believed that the entire universe consisted of just one galaxy, the one we live in. Over a decade later in the 1920s, Edwin Hubble, the guy who the telescope was named after, determined they were in fact other galaxies outside the Milky Way by using variable stars within those galaxies. These variable stars pulsate, and the change in their brightness can be used to measure their distance from us. By showing this, Hubble completely changed our perceived size of the universe. But he didn't stop there. Based on the fact that he could now determine the distance to other galaxies and using Slipher's technique of employing redshifts to calculate how fast and in what direction these objects were moving, Edwin developed Hubble's Law, which basically says the farther objects are from us, the faster they're moving away. So if all the galaxies in the universe are moving farther away from one another, then if we go back in time, it's reasonable to think that they would be moving closer to one another. If you go back far enough in time, you eventually reach a point where everything in the universe is at the same point. Run the clocks forward again and boom, we have the Big Bang. The next strand of evidence is the abundance of light elements. Scientists have shown that at a very young age, the universe was similar to a single star. What I mean by that is soon after the Big Bang, hydrogen was essentially the only chemical element in the universe. But the extremely high temperature and pressure fuse those hydrogen atoms into helium and other light elements. This is known as Big Bang nucleosynthesis. When astronomers measure the amount of hydrogen, helium, and other trace elements in the universe, they find the ratio of these elements to be the same as they would be if the universe had once been similar to a really big star. 
In other words, everything in the universe used to be a lot more compact. Now our last strand of evidence is probably the coolest one yet, and it's the cosmic microwave background radiation. Back in the 1960s, a couple of scientists named Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson were performing experiments with a radio telescope when they noticed something weird. No matter which direction they pointed the telescope or what time of the day it was, they would always detect a background radio emission. They didn't realize it right away, but they soon figured out what they were detecting was that enormous amount of radiation that had previously been theorized as being released by the Big Bang. This was that afterglow of the Big Bang that I mentioned earlier. After billions of years, this radiation was moving away from us at such high speeds that it shifted from visible light to the microwave background radiation that we now detect. So in essence, when we look at an image of the cosmic microwave background, we are gazing at a baby picture of the universe. We are seeing it as it was at a mere 380,000 years old. So there you have it. Like any great theory in science, the Big Bang Theory has plenty of evidence to back it up. It's not just some wild idea that scientists repeat because it sounds cool. You see, that's the cool thing about science. Our scientific theories have been developed by many scientists performing many different experiments. No faith is needed in determining how the universe began. Just follow the evidence. So stay curious, keep asking questions, and continue exploring the world around you because we need your help in the future as we continue unraveling the mysteries that all started with the Big Bang Bang. I apologize and I will never sing again. But thanks for watching.